right, I think we'll get underway. So thanks everyone for joining us for our first quarterly market update of 2023. For those of you that are new to the, our webinars, firstly, welcome. How we like to proceed is by the LPC team of experts providing a high level overview of the Q4 status of the ANZ office, retail and industrial markets. And we'll be providing this commentary from a tenant's perspective. Our presenters today will be myself as moderator, Cara, who will be providing statistical analysis around the vacancies for all the commercial sectors. Ken will be touching on office, Adrian retail, and Michael will be touching on industrial. Again, the agenda will start off with the office, then retail, the industrial, and then we'll finish off with a Q&A at the end of the session. Please remember you can write questions throughout and we'll get to them at the end. So just starting off, I'll quickly read some key outtakes from the January 23rd article featuring Macquarie Bank's outlook for the Australian office and retail in, and industrial sectors. So with office, with headwinds likely to strengthen as rate hikes impact unemployment sentiment and profitability, we've become more cautious on any recovery in the office with the potential for another year of rising vacancy in 2023. And Ken will speak to this expectation and what it relates to tenant opportunities. So for retail, a quote from the article is Morgan Stanley found a decline in asset values is a key challenge for the REIT sector and in particularly those exposed to retail. Center and vicinity are trading at 20% discounts to net asset values and Andrew will provide further insights on what this means for tenants. And finally for industrial, key quote from the article, the bank's brokers described industrial real estate as the shining light. Michael will confirm the challenge for industrial tenants in a very tight market. So starting off with the office market snapshot, we'll look at the vacancy data, the Q4 2020 status, the market trends and the tenant perspective. Thanks, Cara. Thanks, Ed. Hi, everyone. Um, the Property Council of Australia just released their figures today. So this morning's been quite busy. So please bear with me. Let's first look at where office vacancies are increasing, usually good for tenants. Vacancies continue to rise in the two biggest office markets of Sydney and Melbourne, both up by 1% from July as a result of negative demand. The Sydney CBD saw negative demand across A, B and C grade stock. However, premium grade demand remained positive as a result of the post COVID trend of flight to quality buildings. The Perth, Adelaide and Canberra markets also saw a rise in vacancy over the last six months. Non-CBD vacancy as a whole rose across the country. The Sydney non-CBD markets all recorded an increase in vacancy due to negative demand, apart from Parramatta with the only positive demand of just under 13,000 square metres. Hobart had a slight decrease, but remains the tightest market in the country at 2.5% vacancy. Ken will later talk to the opportunities and actions tenants can take in these markets. Brisbane saw a further decrease in vacancy down to 12.9% and continued to see positive demand at more than 40,000 square meters. This is four times the historical average. The Darwin CBD also saw a significant reduction in vacancy. Heading over to New Zealand, Wellington vacancy rates remain low despite new stock. Auckland saw a decrease in vacancy with Christchurch remaining fairly static around 9.7%. However, a lack of new supply will put pressure on these figures. I'll pass over to Ken now for his views on the office market. Thanks, Ken. Well, thanks, Cara. Um, what you're going to see within this slide, this illustrates the difference between lease norms and market conditions. So throughout the presentation, this barometer will feature in each sector um, and each presenter will discuss where each barometer sits uh, with regard yeah, to the sector um, for discussion in relation to the office sector. With regard to lease norms, they are still drafted very much in favour of the landlord due to the supply side and power. The ongoing for challenge, uh, for challenge for tenants um, is to change these lease norms and this involves play, placing a greater emphasis on the transfer of risks, obligations and guarantees back to the landlord. Uh, market conditions. As Cara has uh, reported, there has been um, an increase in the vacancy rate in the um, major capital cities. 
Um, the market conditions currently do favour the tenants, driven by the slow return to work and tenants uh, right, sizing, right sizing their space requirements. Uh, this does present tenants with an opportunity to leverage a current market conditions to change the lease norms um, and individual accommodation arrangements via restructuring and other strategies. And just a quick update on the quarter uh, for uh, statistics, uh, flight quality, it is still uh, relevant in the marketplace. Businesses are still taking the step up to the flight quality um, to higher grade office buildings in the CBD. Uh, this trend is also occurring um, for tenants who are located in the fringe or located outside of the CBD as they are now uh, taking space back in the C CBD um, due to um, uh, providing their their workers uh, with a better uh, working environment. Uh, face rentals, as a result of the flight to quality, uh, we there has been some slight rental growth in the premium grade space due to the increased demand. However, with the, within the secondary grade stock in the A minus B grade, it did remain flat uh, within the CBD. Uh, leasing in comparison to Q3, uh, the level of leasing activity did increase uh, during Q4 as uh, many businesses were seeking to uh, close out the requirements uh, before the end of the year. And look, this is a typical trend that occurs uh, at the end of each year. Um, office occupancy. So this is relation into uh, the return to work. So based on the data um, reported by the uh, PCA, uh, during the, uh, the uh, quarter three, the occupancy uh, was sitting roughly around 58%. Uh, for quarter four, these current, currently um, sat around 63%. So look, please keep in mind that these figures are collated by the Property Council of Australia, which is supported by the landlords. And we suspect uh, these occupancy figures are actually overstated. Oh, thanks, Ed. Uh, what are the market trends um, and, the, uh, and the status? Whilst it has been around for some time, there is still a strong emphasis on ESG. Our clients are, are placing greater focus on buildings and landlords that can actually offer these ESG initiatives. This does help our clients reduce their carbon footprint, meet their social environmental goals, along with meeting their net zero targets. The ESG also ties in with the health and wealth being, as this is a major factor for our clients uh, in terms of what buildings can offer and what they can actually offer their staff and their employees. An example of this is yoga rooms, gyms, and naturally vented, ventilated working areas. Uh, workplace trends. Some of our clients are still adopting the hybrid, hybrid way of working, whilst others, other businesses actually have mandated work uh, working days that their employees have to be back in the office. Uh, look, at the moment, uh, no one has the right formula as yet. However, we are working with a number of our clients um, to um, uh, formulate a, a, work, a workplace uh, study that actually does work for the business. However, um, we expect this to evolve over the course of 2023. As mentioned in the earlier slides, the trend uh, for um, high quality office space is still trending up as employers uh, seek to provide better accommodation for their staff to attra attract and retain talent, in particular in this uh, tight labour market. From our negotiations with, land sorry, Ed, sorry, just on the last point, from our negotiations with the landlords, there is still a continued resistance from landlords to change the terms and conditions of the lease, i.e. changing the, uh, the lease norms. Whilst incentives are on offer, there is still a little shift on the provisions related to the transfer of risk, obligations and guarantees, but we are continuing to place greater emphasis on these items during our negotiations. Um, from the tenant perspective, look, what are the opportunities um, out there for the tenant? Um, as shown in this table are our, our strategies that we implement for our clients along, along with the outcomes. This table will be used throughout the presentation and we will highlight the relevant strategies that apply for each sector having regard to the current market conditions. Uh, for the office sector, our recommendation to our clients is to focus on the items highlighted in orange being a lease restructure before expiry uh, to leverage the market conditions. This means engaging early, um, in, engaging early and reviewing the long, long-term accommodation plan well ahead of the lease expiry. We offer to our clients that time is leveraged. 
the current market conditions do actually present an opportunity to go early. Um, and our advice to our client um, is to uh, review the option, sorry, the, the terms and conditions of your lease. And in particular, if your lease does contain an option term under, before actually making a decision, um, and it's probably best to understand uh, whether the best option is to exercise the option, restructure the lease or relocate to another building. Uh, the second um, item is go big, substantial change and risk transfer. Again, the current market conditions uh, do allow for a change in the lease norms. Um, an, an example of this also is uh, if a tenant cannot access the premises or the building uh, for the intended use as a result of the landlord undertaking works or government restrictions, the tenant is actually provided uh, with a rent concession for the time period um, it has been unable to occupy the premises. Thanks, Ken. Moving on now on to the retail market snapshot, we'll look at the leasing trends and then we'll touch on the large format shopping centre and CBD overviews, and then we'll have a discussion from the tenant's perspective. Thanks, Ed. Um, there have been limited new developments in large format retail since COVID, and we're seeing a decrease in vacancy with an upward trend in face rents and reductions in incentives. Shopping centres are seeing a similar story. So again, we're seeing vacancy decreasing and landlords raising face rents and reducing incentives on offer. Vacancy in neighbourhood centres remains static as it does in the CBD, which continues to be impacted, impacted by lower office occupancy. Rent reviews have increased across all sectors with expectations of this trend to continue. Retail rent reviews are typically based on a CPI plus percentage basis and December's CPI figure had a national rate of 7.8%. A rate this high hasn't been seen since June 1990 and is now the fourth quarter in a row recording above 5%. I'm going to now pass over to Adrian for his advice to retailers. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, Cara. So as Ken highlighted the barometers within the office market, the lease norms for retail remain unfriendly due to the supply side power and market coverage that landlords hold as a collective over retail tenants, as well as restrictions within retail leasing acts. With the market conditions, they're quite varied over the different types of retail. In theory, they should favour the tenant. However, there is a difference between what is happening on the ground to what is being negotiated. As an example, with the retail market experiencing difficulty due to inflation and the reduction in household spending, there should be a reduction in rents to recognise this. However, unfortunately, due to the fragmentation of retailers, the shopping centre landlords especially will be unwilling to negotiate and the tenants therefore placed in a difficult position to either accept a rent not reflecting market or potentially have to vacate and lose their business. So for large format retail, the leasing market is active with a number of brands looking to, to grow. For example, the baby and household category retailers with face rents also growing, especially in the stronger homemaker centres where there is little or no vacancy. In saying that, many household brand tenants are certainly nervous about turnover within the next six months, as discretionary spending may tail off due to inflation and mortgage stress. In the tight market, landlords are resisting incentives on renewals, and which are now very difficult to achieve and only available really for new sites. Currently, our large format retail clients are looking at both new opportunities and current sites from a portfolio perspective with careful consideration and decision making based on informed data. This ensures that new stores fit within the current network and don't cannibalise current stores, as well as considering opportunities to relocate current stores to superior locations, both with an end in mind to provide the greatest return for both the individual stores and the portfolio in general. Shopping centres are showing signs of recovery with lower vacancy and foot traffic is now very close to returning to pre-pandemic levels in the regional and sub-regional centres. Landlords are pushing for longer term renewals with lessee works and rent increases on renewal by 10 to 30%. As Ed detailed in the Macquarie Bank article, landlords are pushing for these increases to protect their asset values. 
The rate of inflation is influencing how customers shop with a reduction of spend on non-essential products, researching product pricing, and an increase of awareness of sales, cheaper products, brands, and stores. Some tenants have even seen a reversion of turnover in November and December from last year due to the high level activity in 2021 from people exiting lockdowns and keen, being keen to spend money. Occupancy cost ratios are increasing with the cost of goods, labour prices and larger in-term rent increases. All of these are having a negative effect on bricks and mortar retailing. Shopping centre landlords must take this into account when setting rental levels, otherwise this will lead to increased closures and vacancies. With the CBD, the retail market is still affected due to the reduced number of office workers and the major landlords believe that the CBD is predicted to remain in distress until late 23, early 24. Low occupancy in the CBD are continually on Fridays and Mondays is a feeling affecting tenants, especially in the food industry. CBD landlords are needing to provide more flexibility to attract tenants, for example, short-term leases and turnover-based rents. Also, there is an increase in food and beverage tenants to suburban fringe markets due to customers wanting to spend their time and money closer to home, which is also having an effect on the CBD. So looking at things from the tenant perspective, there are a number of strategies that a tenant can enact to receive favorable outcomes within the retail sector. In Orange, we've highlighted three strategies that tenants in the retail sector can focus on. So as Ken mentioned earlier, lease restructure before uh, expiry, time is your leverage, go early. Uh, also speak with other tenants within your shopping strip or centre to find out how their business is, is going and what they are paying or incentives received. Look at alternatives and do it early so that if you do have an option to exercise, that's your backup plan. Negotiating early or before your option is due to be exercised allows you to renegotiate your lease and look for opportunities to transfer risk, such as removing personal guarantees or adding additional option terms. Secondly, co-optition with other tenants. Uh, as just mentioned, speaking to other tenants, neighbouring tenants, joining or forming a local traders committee to share information, both of these uh, tactics will take the power of information away from the landlord and provide it to the tenants. Thirdly, bundling negotiations with a common landlord. If you do have a portfolio of sites, look to leverage a portfolio to provide the landlord with security of tenure across a number of centres in return for the reduction of risks, more flexibility, and the landlord being obliged to provide protection for the tenant, such as utilisation clauses or guarantees on the amount of foot traffic. Thanks, Adrian. Moving on to the industrial market snapshot. Again, we'll have the overview, the current status, the outlook, and the tenant perspective. Thanks, Cara. Thanks, Ed. So we can keep this short and sweet. Uh, right now, it's tough. The industrial real estate market is experiencing a consistent trend of decreasing vacancy, with some cities such as Sydney reaching extremely low levels of 0.2%. This is the lowest industrial vacancy rate of any city globally. As a result of this low vacancy, we are obser observing an upward trend in net face rents across all markets. I'm going to now pass on to Mar Michael, who will provide his insights on how to navigate this tough market. Thank you, Cara, and good morning, everyone. Just stay on this slide for a tick, um, uh, Ed. Just I just want to add a little bit more context, but consistent uh, with what Cara said, there's and, and with our previous updates across the board and across the ditch, it remains very challenging for our tenants. Uh, the Australian vacancy rate is the lowest in the world. And with the exception of uh, Melbourne, vacancy rates have further tightened in all major capitals. And this has led to upward pressure on rentals and the further dilution of incentives. But notably, um, Brisbane and Perth vacancy rates have dropped significantly in the past 12 months. And as a result, those markets have experienced considerable rental growth. But what really interests me, and we're going to keep a close watch on this, is Melbourne's tightening vacancy rate has stalled. So let's now take a closer look at the trends and the status of the industrial market. Next slide. Thank you. Um, as we've reported in previous updates, the industrial sector continues to be very challenging for the tenant. The market continues to be led by sustained demand from the e-commerce, logistics and food and beverage sectors, while the supply side is not responding with any urgency whatsoever to address that demand, leading to an imbalance in the market, which in turn has placed continued upward pressure on rentals. So effective rentals continue to increase 
and incentives are nationally around about five to 10%. However, perhaps there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for the tenant as there is evidence that this demand is flattening off due to the uncertainties in uh, glo the global economy and the larger markets appear to be responding as rates of growth are lower than preceding quarters. I say the larger markets as Perth and Brisbane year on year rental growth has, as at the fourth quarter has been its highest recorded. Although the supply side in Brisbane and Perth was very healthy pre pandemic. So perhaps it's a case of those markets just doing a bit of catch up to the rest of the region. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, Melbourne's vacancy rate has stalled. I'm going to really watch this closely over the next couple of months and quarters as this major Australian market, um, as it could be an, an indicator of things to come. And, and I remain an optimist. So next slide, please. So is there genuinely any light at the end of the tunnel? This is a question I'm asked often, as you can imagine, with, uh, with industrial tenants. As Adrian touched on earlier, the Australian economy has rebounded after COVID and the GDP growth has been around about 3.5% per annum for the last couple of years. Um, however, inflation is the issue. Um, the RBA has responded, um, uh, sorry, has reported that it was surprised by the recent CPI figure of a national 7.8%, which was higher than it for, had forecast. Furthermore, economists are tipping further interest rate increases as the RBA continues to use this as its key monetary policy measure to curb inflationary pressures and the ongoing high levels of consumer demand uh, and spending rather. And as economist Callum Pickering says, persistent inflation of this nature and the mon monetary policy response required to contain it aren't often consistent with economic growth. But then let's balance this, balance this and add to the mix the increased cost of capital coupled with the inflationary pressure on construction costs and building materials, which are stalling industrial development. There is very little speculative development at the moment, if, it, if at all, and rather industrial developers are only committing to construction once a tenant is secured at a rental rate that supports their internal rates of return. So the supply side is not increasing. The big question for me is whether demand will remain at the current levels. As we mentioned earlier, there is some market evidence to support that the, the demand is flattening off and surely with further interest rate hikes, cons consumer spending will drop. Keeping in mind the main driver for industrial demand has been on the back of e-commerce. So if the market behaves rationally and consumer spending decreases, surely demand for industrial space will also ease off. And perhaps we're starting to see the early stages of the market responding to some downturn. Um, I regularly read um, articles on the US market as it tends to be a bit of an indicator for the Australian market. And they're reporting that they're starting to see a number of major occupiers um, sublease space for buildings that are even yet to be completed, which suggests that they are adjusting their forecast uh, demand right now. Of greater relevance is a number of recent Australian reports have started that they're also starting to see some evidence of subleasing activity. Um, this would suggest that some occupiers have overcommitted or are responding to their own forecast downturn in activity. So next slide. So where do the opportunities lie? My colleagues have spoken about lease norms and market conditions and where they sit on the, uh, the barometer. Um, as you can see, it's not favorable in both cases for, for the industrial market. It's been on an upward trend for the past decade, experiencing rent on rent, year on year rental growth, decreasing vacancy and incentives. So it's been a landlord's dream and ultimately a tenant's nightmare. Accordingly, there has been very little leverage for the tenant, both in terms of market conditions and lease terms. And the sustained growth of, of the market over that decade has skewed the norm towards the landlord. So in order to shift the needle on the barometer back in favour of the tenant, careful consideration of business needs, an expert knowledge of the market, an experience and a sprinkling of patience are essential. On the next slide, we'll look at some potential strategies that can assist in moving that needle on the barometer to a more balanced tenant friendlier situation. Next slide. Oh, it is. Sorry. Uh, look, um, it's pretty clear that the industrial market is very tough for the tenant, uh, which certainly limits our leverage opportunities. Nevertheless, there are a number of strategies um, that are available uh, to the, the industrial tenant. Um, I actually had highlighted the, the very first one, which is portfolio optimization review and reset. Um, must uh, apologize for that, but uh, I will talk to the very first one on this, on this slide. Um, which is a strategy we often apply, particularly in the case of multi-site occupiers. Um, 
It's a portfolio review in which we take a strategic view to identify opportunities to better align the client's property portfolio with its business needs in order to optimize its property performance. Business needs can change over time. And as a result, so can property needs. A portfolio review can identify opportunities such as a reduction in space requirements, identification of redundant space, an amalgamation of business units onto one side, consolidation of functions together with the relocation to a new, more, more affordable or productive site, subleasing of redundant space, or if the property is owned, perhaps there's opportunities to invest that redundant space and use that capital to reinvest into business operations. Another strategy is um, that we look at is, is, is to, to look at mitigating risk and transferring certain obligations to the landlord via side deeds or through a variation to an existing, uh, an existing lease. Everything is negotiable, but make no mistake, it's hard yards and it takes skill and patience as I previously mentioned. Look, a good example of shifting the obligations to uh, a landlord in the industrial sector is, is a commitment or an obligation on the landlord to meet certain energy targets through initiatives such as solar power. Increasingly, we're negotiating provisions in the lease of this nature. And look, in the, in the interest of time, I'll hand, hand back to Ed now and open it up for questions. Ed? Thanks, Michael. So yes, we're now at the Q&A. Please keep the questions coming through. I'll get us started off. Um, so the panelists mentioned the aspect of time in all the slides. How late is too late to start looking at your option? Uh, look, I'll, I might start off with that. It, look, it really depends on what size, if you're an office user. Um, but usually, look, if, if it's six months out from your lease expiry, look, based on our opinion, that is probably actually a little bit late. Um, I think, like we've mentioned before, time, time, is, time is actually leverage and it actually costs the tenant nothing uh, to go early. Perfect. Um, Adrian, this one's for you. So for retail, can you elaborate on the recent end of year decrease in sales and how this will impact retailers moving forward with their accommodation requirements? Yeah, so the, um, there are a couple of figures that were released. Um, one was that retail spending had increased 7.5%. Uh, I think it was um, uh, year on year in December. Um, but I think there's a, there's, a, there's a little bit more to sort of dig into those figures. The interesting part uh, for, for me was if you look at it from a month-on-month -month basis, um, turnover fell, uh, fell just under 4%, um, which is really saying that, you know, the cost of living pressures are starting to, uh, uh, starting to hit households. Um, the other thing of note is um, uh, with the turnover is the turnover is probably higher because inflation is causing the cost of, of goods to actually increase. Um, so I think it's going to be interesting uh, in the next six months just to see where um, profitability probably lies rather than, than turnover. Thanks, Adrian. Um, Michael, for you, so you mentioned sublease space. Um, how likely are we going to see more of that in the Australian market? Yep, it, it's genuine, Ed. Um, they're calling it the hidden vacancy, so it's not reflected in the, the vacancy st statistics that we uh, we we provide in these updates, but it is genuine and I'm, I'm witnessing it firsthand. I did two inspections yesterday uh, in Southwest and Western Sydney, and both of which were sublease opportunities um, where uh, they had committed to too much space. Indeed, one of them had uh, taken over two strata titled units and was rel relinquishing one of them. So there are genuine opportunities there. Um, and uh, because it's been so tight and we work on the tenant side, I'm optimistic and uh, look, at, look upon this as being um, some light at the end of the tunnel, as I said in the presentation. Um, and perhaps there is some relief in, in the future for the industrial tenant. Thanks, Michael. Michael, well, we'll finish off with one last question. So we had the PCA 2023 Outlook Breakfast this morning and the landlord stated that they are encouraging office tenants to help retailers in the CBD. Um, what do the panellists have to say to that comment? I'll jump in. I didn't present. It's John here. And um, that was an interesting uh, comment from the landlord. And we would agree with the sentiment that um, it makes sense for everybody to contribute to uh, re the economic recovery in the retail sector. But I think what was missing from the comment is that there is the broader challenge for uh, leasing to be, lease arrangements to be more flexible 
for the supply side, for the landlord side to have to work harder to make the tenant business work, which means a shift in obligations and guarantees and risks um, a little bit away from the tenant and with the risk, more risk being borne with the landlord. We think that uh, for the country as a whole, that a change, a shift in the lease norms where the supply side has to work harder to make the tenant business work would uh, give the country as a whole a competitive advantage and a competitive advantage in each of the three sectors we've dealt with. Thanks, John. Well, I think we run out of time, so I just want to thank our panellists and thank you all for joining and join us for our next quarterly update, which will be in May. We'll see you then. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you all. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.